One of the challenges faced when learning assembly language is displaying the results of your algorithms. In the previous video I've shown how to display hexadecimal numbers, so actually to convert a number into its hexadecimal string representation and then display this string. And I've created a series of videos uh, on how to display strings in uh, MS-DOS, Windows and Linux. So today I'm uh, going to focus on displaying uh, decimal numbers. And again, uh, we're going to create a function to convert a number to its uh, decimal string representation. But first, uh, what is a number? Uh, and how is it represented uh, internally in the computer. So a number uh, can either be signed or unsigned. <coughs> For this video I'm going to focus on unsigned numbers. <coughs> so this means uh, numbers that do not have a sign, so they are uh, only values from zero to the maximum uh, possible integer value. And uh, there's also the question of <coughs> how many bits are used uh, to represent uh, the number. And I'm going to focus on 32-bit uh, integers that are unsigned. So according to this uh, Wikipedia article, uh, the highest unsigned uh, value uh, for a 32-bit integer is this number here. And why is this important? Because uh, this uh, allows us to get an idea of how many digits uh, we need to store in our string. So uh, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, so in total tr uh, 10 uh, digits. So our string uh, needs to have at least uh, 10 uh, places used to store the uh, representation. So how do we go about uh, an algorithm for this representation? Well, I uh, draw here a very short uh, algorithm. So let's try to convert the number 234. Uh, so we start by dividing this number by 100. We get the quotient 2 and the reminder 34. Then we again take this reminder and divide it by 10, we get quotient 3 and reminder 4. And finally, uh, the reminder 4 is divided by 1 and we get the quotient 4. And as you can see here, by uh, uh, turning these individual digits into uh, characters and then uh, placing them together in a string, we get the string 234, which actually corresponds uh, to the string representation of this number. So let's take a look at the assembly language implementation. I have it here. So uh, I called this function uh, uint32 to string, so that's an unsigned integer 32 bit to string. And uh, what it does, it uh, expects the input to be in the register EAX, so this is a 32 bit register. Then uh, in R8, uh, we have a pointer to a string where uh, the number will be stored. And uh, the only change will be uh, in the R8 register, which will be incremented by uh, 10. Uh, this corresponds to our 10 digits that will be stored uh, in this uh, string. And uh, what I've used here, I've used a little trick. I have a conversion table which actually contains uh, these numbers. These are actually powers of 10. So you see here uh, 1, 10, 100, and then uh, larger numbers with uh, multiple zeros. Uh, and I also have 
uh, at the end of this table as zero, and I'm using this to detect uh, the end of the table. Okay, so let's take a look at the function. Um, so first in uh, the register RSI, I'm uh, uh, placing uh, the table, actually pointer to the table, the beginning of the table, and then I'm calling this uh, win32 to string internal, and this will actually uh, display the string. Uh, but uh, it's also possible, since I'm detecting the end of the table by checking for the zero value, it's also possible, for example, to represent a number that only has nine digits, and in this case uh, I'm uh, starting uh, with RSI uh, later on in the table. So if you know your number is not going to uh, go to the maximum value, and you know it will only use nine positions or eight or seven then it's possible to start uh, from somewhere else in the conversion table okay so now let's take a look at this um, uh, internal function so in this case uh, it expects in eax uh, to have the number in r8 the string position and in rsi the conversion table, so the start of the conversion table. So uh, what I'm doing here, first I'm uh, saving on the stack the registers that will be modified and of course at the end of the function I'm restoring these registers so that the function has no side effects and the entire algorithm is uh, just here, it's very short so what happens, um, of course I'm using uh, div here to divide and uh, should take care that the div instruction actually divides edx, eax to ecx, okay? So it's important that edx is zero, and I'm doing this here with XOR edx edx, which actually uh, zeros the edx register. And then uh, in eax, uh, initially we have the entire number. And in ecx, uh, we have the current value from our conversion table. Okay, uh, so. First, uh, I'm comparing here uh, ECX with zero, so if, if we reach the end of the conversion table, then we simply jump to done. Uh, and if not, uh, we apply this uh, divide operation, which will uh, give us uh, the quotient in EAX and the reminder in EDX. Uh, now, remember that uh, the ROX register, which is 64-bit, can be accessed uh, as EAX, which is 32-bit, but also as AX, which is 16-bit, and also AL, AH, which are 8-bit uh, registers. So I'm using this and I'm accessing uh, the quotient EAX as AL, which is the lower eight bits. So this corresponds to the digit, and I'm adding uh, the character zero. So this actually turns uh, that uh, value into a character. So if I have the digit four, I'm adding character zero, and I get character four. And I'm simply storing this in the string in the destination string that's pointed by R8. I'm incrementing R8 so that we move to the next string position and the reminder which is in EDX uh, gets moved uh, into EAX. I'm also incrementing uh, RSI by 4 so this is the pointer in our uh, conversion table and again if we look here yeah, each of these numbers is stored as 32-bit numbers okay so this takes uh, four bytes that's why I'm adding here 
uh, 4 to RSI and I'm jumping uh, to the internal loop okay and again this uh, happens until we reach the end of the conversion table which is signaled uh, by having a zero in that position uh, and finally uh, any modified registers are restored using pop instructions and we have a return from this internal function okay and if we started by calling uh, point 32 to string uh, then we get back here uh, we also restore RSI and we finally return uh, to our program so let's also take a look at our main program so uh, first I'm uh, importing these uh, functions uh, I've shown you these functions previously let's quickly take a look at these uh, so uh, initialization of uh, operating system related functionality for Linux we don't need anything uh, for Windows you need to take uh, to obtain a pointer to the console uh, in order to write on it uh, OS console write uh, allows us to write a uh, string the console using syscall and uh, OS exit uh, uses a syscall to exit back to the system so again I have uh, created videos uh, for these functions on uh, MS-DOS, uh, Windows and Linux so you can uh, create uh, similar codes for uh, any of these operating systems okay so um, what we do here we have the main entry point uh, we first call OS init which initializes any operating system uh, data if needed uh, then uh, I have here a list of numbers so 1, 100, 1000, 4, 33 uh, 99,999 uh, and again I have a zero here to signal the end of this list so you can add uh, other numbers and see how they get displayed uh, I also have this clear line I've uh, discussed it in the previous video when I displayed hexadecimal numbers so what's happening here I have this uh, buffer here which starts filled with uh, axes. I'm uh, clearing it with uh, spaces and I'm uh, actually uh, placing multiple spaces at once in uh, this buffer here. Uh, and uh, then after being cleared, uh, this buffer will be used to store the output uh, from our uh, conversion uh, routine. So I'm starting by moving into EAX, the start of the list of numbers. I'm uh, testing to see if uh, there is any bit set. If not, you, so if it's zero, we reach the end of the list, so we jump to done. Uh, in our item, placing uh, the start of the buffer and I'm calling uh, the conversion function. So it's quite simple, this code here. And uh, then I'm um, calling uh, console write uh, by placing again the uh, buffer in uh, RSI and the size in RTX. Uh, and uh, here I'm moving to the next element in the list of integers and uh, jumping to the display loop and finally when uh, the entire list of numbers was processed I'm uh, calling uh, OS exit which will return to the operating system so let's take a look on uh, how to assemble this program again I have a simple shell script uh, I've shown this a number of times in previous videos 
so I'm using uh, NASM. It's uh, installed in my home folder. I have a video about compiling NASM from source uh, into your home folder without uh, requiring uh, root access to the system. I'm using uh, LD for linker and I'm first assembling uh, these uh, three files obtaining object files so this dot o and then I'm linking them together I'm also uh, allocating a stack size uh, of uh, 1000 and so let's see what happens okay so I've executed it and uh, we got uh, these uh, object files also these uh, listing files and uh, we got this executable and we can execute it and uh, we have here uh, the numbers that are displayed so 1, 100, 1433 uh, 99,999 yeah so these are all the numbers from our list so have fun with this and don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time bye